Welcome to another message from God's Holy Word. We're going to study the epistles of John and the parabolic, symbolic proverb teaching that he uses in 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. We'll read all of these. been reading these books that we're studying with because it's good for us to read the Word of God, number one. That's the most important thing we can do. Pray and read the Bible. Pray and read the Bible. What was from the beginning we have heard that we have seen with our eyes and what we have beheld with our hands and handled with concerning the word of life. And the life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us what we have seen and heard we proclaim to you also that you also may have fellowship with us and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and his Son Jesus Christ and these things we write to you that our joy may be made complete and this is the message that we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and we have walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, and we have fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus Christ, cleanses us from all sin. And if we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. These are opposites that John is using. Truth, error, black, white. My little children, I am writing these things to you that you may not sin. But if any man sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. And he himself is a propitiation, the atonement for our sins, and not for ours only, but for also for those of the whole entire world. Jesus died, Christ died for all men's sins. All is all. And by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. The one who says, I have come to know him, and does not keep him commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word in him, the love of God has truly been perfected. By this we know that we are in him. The one who says that he abides in him, and ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked. Beloved, I am not writing a new commandment to you, but an old commandment, which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard. On the other hand, I'm writing you a new commandment to you, which is true in him and in you because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. The one who says he is in the light and yet hates his brother is in the darkness until now, and now, period. The one who loves his brother and abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But the one who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for you for his name's sake. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who has been from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you are overcome. You have overcome the evil one, and I have written to you, children, because you know the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you know him who has been from the beginning. And I have written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. Do not love the world nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the, and the boastful pride of life is not from Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away in all its lust, but the one who does the will of God abides forever. Children, it is the last hour. Just as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have arisen. From this we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us because they were not really of us. For if they had been of us, they would have remained with us. 
But they went out in order that they might be shown that they are all not of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. You all know. I have written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it. Because no lie is of the truth. He who is a liar, the one who denies that Jesus Christ is Christ, the Messiah. This is the Antichrist, and the one who denies the Father and the Son. You can't have one without the other. You've got to have the Father and the Son, or you don't have no you don't you have no God. Whoever denies the Son does does not have the Father. The one who confesses the Son has the Father also. As for you, let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If what you have heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise which he himself made to us, eternal life. We have to understand John is writing this to prove that Jesus is Jehovah of the Old Testament. That people were saying that he, was, he is not the Son of God, but a Son of God, as the modern day Jehovah's Witnesses do. And John is fighting this. This Arius of Alexandria that would arise many years later. And he's denouncing these people that do not believe in the incarnation of Jesus Christ. The death, burial, and resurrection of him in person. And this is a promise which he made himself to us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who are trying to deceive you and lead you astray. And as for you, the anointing which you have received from the him abides in you, and you have no need for anyone to teach you, but as his anointing teaches you about all things and is true and is not a lie, just as he has taught you, you abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink away from him in shame at his coming. And if you know that he is righteous, and you know that every one also who practice righteousness is born of him, see how great a love of the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called children of God, and such are we are. For this reason the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now are we children of God, and it has not appeared as yet what we shall be. We know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him just as he is. No more veil, no more shadows. And everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself just as he is pure. Everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness, and, and sin is lawlessness. Lawlessness. And you know that he appeared in order to take away the sins, and in him there is no sin. No one abides him and sins. No one who sins has seen him and knows him. Little children, let no one deceive you. The one who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who practices sin is of the devil, for the for the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God appeared for this purpose, that he might destroy the works of the devil. No one is born of God, practices sin, because his seed abides in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. By this the children of God and children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor the one who does not love his brother. For this is the message which you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. John is a gospel of love, but he's going to become very harsh about false doctrine. Not as Cain, who was the evil one, and slew his brother, for what reason did he slay him? Because his deeds were evil, and his brothers were righteous. Do not marvel, brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brethren. He who does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer and know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. And we know love by this and that he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. We ought to spend our lives for the brethren, live our lives for the brethren. Whoever has the world's goods and beholds his brother in need and closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? Little children, let us not love with word or with tongue, but in deed and truth. 
We shall know this. We shall know by this that we are of the truth and shall assure our heart before him. Build our heart before him. Persuade our heart before him. And whatever our heart condemns us, for God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask and receive from him because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. And in this commandment, that we believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another just as he commanded us. The one who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in him. And we know that by this he abides in us by the spirit which he has given us. Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Test the spirits to see whether they are from God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. Every spirit that does not confess Jesus Christ from God that is the spirit of the Antichrist of which have heard that he is coming and now is already in the world. You are from God, little children, and overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak as from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God who knows God and listen to us. He who is from God, God does not listen to us. We are from God. He who knows God listens to us. He who is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another for love is from God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. One who does not love does not know God for God is love. By the love of God is manifested in us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. In this love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be an atonement, a propitiation for our sin. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. This was a real problem in these churches, wasn't it? Loving the brethren. That's one of the hardest things to do. No one has to be held to God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. And we have beheld and bear witness that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God abides in him and he in God. The Gnostics did not do this. John is going to plainly point them out real soon. Mm -hmm. And we have come to know him and have believed the love which God has for us. God is love, and the one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this love is perfected with us that we may have confidence in the day of judgment because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, and but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves punishment. And the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says that I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. This commandment we have from him that the one who loves God should love his brother also. Whosoever believes in Jesus Christ, whosoever believes in Jesus is the Christ is born of God, whosoever loves the Father loves the child born of him. Talking about Jesus, the Son of God. Islam says God had no son. Their confession of faith is there is no God but all I think he has no companion. And Muhammad is his prophet. And Islam takes all of the rightful treasures of the person of Jesus Christ and puts it in the malignant hands of Muhammad. Whoever believes that Jesus Christ is born of God, whoever loves the Father loves the child born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and observe his commandments. 
For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. And who is the one who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood and Jesus Christ, not with water only, but with water and with blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness because of the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and the three are in agreement. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater, for the witness of God is this, that he has borne witness concerning his Son, Jesus came into the world. Kahologo sarks again until, as John said before, and the word, the Jehovah flesh, he became and dwelt, in the, and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory. The glory is only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. No one has seen God at any time but the only begotten God, the one being in the bosom of the Father, that one has led himself out. The one who believes in the Son of God has a witness in himself, and the one who does not believe in God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the witness that God has borne concerning his Son. And the witness is this, Jehovah Witnesses, Islam, all of you that do not believe this, the curse of God is upon you already. That God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son and in his son only. The only way, the truth and life. There is no way to the Father except through Jesus Christ. He who has the son has life and he does not have the son of God does not have life. These things I've written to you who believe in the name of the son of God. Again, over, over and over. Son of God, son of God, son of God, son of God. Because Jehovah, the one who shall become, became and we know him as the God, the Son, the Son of God. In order that you may know that you have eternal life. Do you have eternal life? Have you believed in this true Son of God? The only propitiation, the only atonement for your sins that they will ever be made. And this is the confidence that we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that he has requests which he have asked from him. If anyone sees his brother committing a sin not leading to death, he shall ask God for him will give him life to those who commit sin not leading to death. There is a sin leading to death, a hamartiogenic death. I do not say that he should make requests for this. All unrighteousness is sin, and this sin is not leading to death. We know that no one is born of God's sins, but who is born of God keeps him, and the evil one does not touch him. We know that we are of God, the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. We know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding in order that we might know him who is true, and we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Little children, guard yourselves from idol. Second John. The elder of the chosen lady and her children, my love and truth, not only but I, but also all who know the truth. For the sake of the truth, which abides in us and we will are with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace we will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Son of the Father and truth and love. I was very glad to find some of your children walking in truth, just as we received commandment to do from the Father. And now I ask you, lady, now he's talking to a church, not as writing to you a new commandment, but the one which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. This is the love that we walk according to his commandments, and this is a commandment just as you have heard from the beginning that you should walk in it. Many deceivers have gone out into the world and those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is extremely important right here. This is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch yourselves, you might not lose what we have already accomplished, but that you may receive a full reward. Anyone who goes too far and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God, and the one who abides in the teaching, he has both the Father and the Son. The Son of God is imperative. 
for eternal life. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him to your house and do not give him greeting. For the one who gives him a greeting participates in his evil deeds. Having many things to write to you, I do not want to do so with paper and ink, but I shortly want to come to you and speak to you face to face that your joy may be made full. The children of your chosen lady, sister, greet you. John number three. The third epistle of John. The elder to the beloved Begaeus, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health, just as your soul prospers. For I was very glad when the brethren came and bore witness to your truth, that is, how you are walking in truth. I have no greater joy than this to hear of my children walking in truth. Beloved, you are acting faithfully in whatever you accomplish for the brethren, especially when they are strangers. And they bear witness to your love before the church. And you will do well to send them on their way in a manner worthy of God. For they went out, of the, out for the sake of the name, accepting nothing from the Gentiles. Therefore we ought to support such men, that they may be fellow workers with the truth. I wrote something to the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to be first among them, does not accept what we say. Diotrephes, that's a bad boy. He names him straightly. For this reason I came, and I call attention to his deeds, which he does, unjustly accusing us with wicked words, and not satisfied with this. Neither does he himself receive the brethren, for he did he forbids those who desire to do so and puts them out of the church. This is a Nicolaitan here. Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. The one who does good is of God, and the one who does evil has not seen God. Black and white, truth and lies. Demetrius has received a good testimony from everyone and from the truth itself. And we all bear witness and we, you know that our witness is true. Demetrius means Jimmy, by the way. I had many things to write to you, but I'm not willing to write them to you with pen and ink. But I hope to see you shortly and we shall speak face to face. Peace be to you. The friends greet you. Greet the friends by name. Now let's go to a very short reading and all the parables of the Bible on page 357 and we read this a little bit in the last ones but let's look at it a little better 1st, 2nd and 3rd John the parables of John coming to the epistles of John it is not surprising to discover how almost devoid they are of symbolic illustrations but they're full of proverbs they're full of opposites his gospel as we have seen uses the word proverb for parables and while rich in allegorical media, material does not mention our Lord's parables it is evident that the words of the master made a deep impression on John's mind. In after years he meditated upon them and he reproduced them rather than his own thoughts and words. Thus in his epistles he writes the most commanding authority and has the most loving tenderness a simple, clear, and calm language, unadorned by imagery. Contrast are marked. Contrast. Black and white. Truth and error. Light and darkness and life and death. Truth and lying. Holiness and sin. Loving and hating. Love of the Father and love of the world and the children of God and the children of devil. The spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Light and dark are about the only similes John uses and are a remnant of the apostles' previous language. The parallels between John's gospel and the first epistle of John as will be very profitable if you study them. The parallels between John's gospel and the first epistle of John is very important. Very, very important. The beginning, the eternal God, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. These are paramount truths. Without those paramount truths, you have no eternal life. Father, I send this message out 
we send it. Father, cleanse our minds, cleanse our hearts, cleanse our lives. Help us to glorify you in every way. And I pray for those that are out there and all over the world that as they hear these words, that they will consecrate their lives, that they will believe in you and have eternal life. And Father, forgive us where we fail you. Forgive me where I fail you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.